The saying goes that April showers bring May flowers. Well, these players hoping to be showered in gold and may be get themselves a golden ticket trip all the way to Clash Royale League World Finals. Hello and welcome to Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for anything Clash Royale related in the esports scene and beyond. I'm Rich Slayton, joining me my friend Andrew Guy and of course part of our team, two-time regional champion for Clash Royale League, Joshua A.C. Sharon, and world champion coach for Team Liquid, Eric E.B. 7 Benamu. Andrew, we have had a whole lot of fun here in episode one, episode two today, lots of ground to cover. An action-packed episode coming your way today, guys, and also an action-packed week for Joshua AC Sharon. He won't be joining us as he has a broken nose, so sending well wishes his way. Hopefully a very fast recovery so he can join us on the next episode of Three Crowns. But today, a lot to get through. As you heard, golden tickets are flying, whether it's in the Queso Cup Golden Edition or the ESL Snapdragon Pro Series. All the information on that coming your way just a little bit later. I'm going to be sitting down with an interview, something I haven't done in a long time since our World Finals. I love interviews, and I'm very excited to talk to Tribes Wallace, who had an exceptional performance this last week at the Queso Cup Golden Edition. And of course, if you guys haven't been watching the Queso Cup Golden Edition, you probably want to know what's been going on. So, Rich, why don't you break it down for us, man? The Queso Cup has been around for a while, but Andrew, this is the first time we have a Golden Edition, and of course, the first time that we had an in-game global tournament as a qualifier for a CRL event. Thousands of players attempted to get into it, including some of your favorite pros and streamers, but only 128 made it through Phase 1 onto Phase number 2. Two days of closed brackets where you could earn points to move on to that final. Here we go, the final of day number 1. It's Mohamed Light up against the Drill player a soft using a different kind of drill one attached to the mighty miner showing off the skills of that brand newly buffed champion but in the end as we often say it was all about mohammed light brilliant play with the nato and golden knight he wins that first pass on to the championship weekend day number two this was a great moment between demas and ian two talented young players ian out of the us of a putting pressure on the right hand side with the royal giant but look at the Counter push. Mega Knight, Archer Queen, Mini P.E.K.K.A., Miner, but a brilliant bar barrel takes care of the Archer Queen, pulls the Mini P.E.K.K.A. back, but look at that zap. It looks like Mini P.E.K.K.A. going for some free pancakes, but the Fireball steps on in, stops that from happening, and this bar barrel Easter beer at play to save everything. Look at the look on my face, look on Juicy's face. Great play by Ian, but every day has a champion, and this day's champion was none other than Tribe Gaming's Wallace. This fisherman looked like it might lose track of the Electro Giant because of that tombstone, but instead turned its focus, pulled the E-Giant away from tanking for that graveyard, saved a lot of HP. Second graveyard comes in, plus on top of that, a poison. Mother Witch and Fisherman do enough to defend, and the arrows steal the win back at the last second. And there you have Wallace taking the champion of day two. Both of them moving on as our top two qualifiers. And there you see Wallace finishing things off against Arden Toas. Of course, Mo and Wallace, the number one and number two seeds. But there are more players, 16 in fact, as part of that playoff event this weekend for the golden ticket. Mohamed Light, Wallace, Arden Toas, Faust, Asaf, so many great players, and of course you see in the 15th spot, defending world champion of Clash Royale League, Mugi, in that number 15 place. So a lot of talent here. New talent, old talent, battling it out for that $50,000 and a trip to Clash Royale League World Finals. One player, though, who stood out, of course, was Wallace winning day number two. For more from him, let's go to an interview with Wallace and Andrew Guy. Thank you so much, Rich. Yeah, I'm so excited to sit down with Wallace today. He had a photo finish there in the semifinals, and then, of course, a great run there in the finals on our final day of competition in the Queso Cup Golden Edition. Wallace, first of all, hello. Thank you so much for taking your time out of the day. How are you feeling after this great performance last weekend? Hey, Andrew. I'm really happy because it was a really tough format to pass. It's not really easy to get to the finals and win. So I was really happy after the result. Yeah, and you know, you talk about getting to the finals there, a really, really close game or close set with Faust. Talk me through that 53 HP game. The graveyard comes down at the end. You drop the Mother Witch, you drop the Royal Ghost, just trying to do anything you can. What was going through your mind throughout that entire five minutes? That game was really crazy because he was using a really strange deck. He was using a E-Giant with Graveyard. 
So I didn't expect a grave run in the last last moments of the match, so it was really tough. And at the last moment, I used my motorways for the, the grave run and put the arrows to get the match. It was a really tough matchup. Yeah, it was a, a great matchup. You saw Juicy J and Rich losing their minds. I want to ask you, so you talk about Faust's deck being a little odd, but your deck was a little off meta as well. Why was the Mother Witch there? And, and it definitely paid off. So in the third game, I tried to counter some decks that he used. I put the Mother Witch, the Rhyme Rider, Mega Knight, try to counter some decks that I like Poggies or some Spam decks I like to use. So the Mother Witch was really useful. And he used the graveyard, so it was really, really good pick. Yeah, I mean, that ended up being a really, really great gift from the Clash Royale gods. Now, I want to talk just a little bit more about you and your career. You know, over the last three years since 2019, it feels like you have just grown every single year, whether it's Royale Masters, Queso Cup Golden Edition, the All-Stars, or being 14th in the world last year in the 2021 World Finals. What has changed with you, Wallace? Have you just grown up? What's changed in your game style or what's changed with you that has made you be so successful? Well, it all started when I was playing CRL, the teams format with Pain. In that time, I was training really, really hard. Like, I think eight hours per day. Wow. It was really hard training. So from there, I just keep focusing on my gameplay. I won the All-Stars too. And then the... I came second in the brand song this year, in the, the in January. And right now I'm a champion with the Kizu Cup. So I was really focusing and really training a lot, and I hope to win next week. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm rooting for you. I know Eric is rooting for you as well. Uh, that confidence that's been building with you know all these great wins and, and accomplishments coming under your belt. Talk to me about some of your competitors. You have Mohammed Light still out there. You have our former world champion in Moogie, but then you have guys like Asaf, Ian, Faust, Arden Toas, who you ran into in your semifinals and finals run. Who's your biggest competition out there? So I think everyone that qualified for this stage is really, really good. I think there's not one person that's not didn't deserve it. So I think I'm gonna go versus Muji in the first match. In the first match. But I'm really confident to win. He's the world champion, but I think I'm, I'm gonna win him. And the opponent to fear is Muhammad Light. Uh, Muhammad Light's the, the first one, Muhammad Light and Mushi. And another opponent, I think he's really strong as Faust too. Yeah. That's really... All right, so the last question I have for you, Wallace, before we let you go today, we talked a lot about your success over the last 36 months, the last three years of competitive play. What advice would you give to all the new up-and-coming players that are hopefully going to become Clash Royale legends? I think there are really 10,000 players right now, and I think the best thing to do is believe in yourself because it's really hard going playing versus a lot of top players like Muhammad like Muhammad like Muji, Morden, a lot of players. And it's, you have to be really mentally well, because if you're not, it's not going to be a really good match. And yeah, train a lot too. Yeah, I mean, those eight hours a day, definitely putting in their work. So Tribes Wallace sitting down with us today here on Three Crowns. Thank you so much, my friend. Best of luck on your way to that $20,000 prize and that golden ticket. We're rooting for you here. At least I know most of us are rooting for you. So thank you again for taking time out, man. And we'll talk to you later on. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, every everyone here. And I hope to win next week. And yeah, see you. See you later, man. Talking about Wallace trying to win next weekend or this weekend, trying to get that golden ticket. For more information on more golden tickets that you can't get here at the Queso Cup, Rich, tell us how you can get one maybe through, I don't know, ESL Snapdragon Pro Series. Well, Andrew, that ESL Snapdragon Pro Series is currently underway. Both the EU MENA Golden Ticket Edition and the North American $20,000 Edition. We are in the midst of it. We have already had two qualifiers to the finals for the ESL EU MENA portion of this one. You see Mohamed Light, no surprises there, and Mario taking up four or two of those six overall special qualifying spots. If you win a qualifier, you're guaranteed to the finals. But, of course, you see those other 10 white spots well over those six qualifiers you can accumulate points to move on and some players have already begun to do so currently op sam is the points leader very likely he goes through to qualify cap gun 
Mohamed Light's countryman. Right behind him, you see Morton from SK Gaming, OP Sam's former 2v2 teammate. And all the way down currently, tied for eighth place, you see Team Queso's Ruben, the 2020 CRL World Champion. He is currently not in those top 10 spots, but there is plenty more. Four more, in fact, open qualifiers for you to get one of those spots in the finalists for those 16 places in the EU and MENA region. A golden ticket and $60,000 on the line. Make sure you sign up April 29th, May 1st, 6th, and 8th. All of those are open qualifiers. And of course, if you're not in Europe, Middle East, or North Africa, North America currently has a $20,000 event through ESL with two more open qualifiers on May 3rd and May 4th. And of course, North America, you'll get a golden ticket qualifier eventually too. Don't you worry more on that later. To sign up for these events and all esports events in Clash Royale's CRL 2022 season, check out esports.clashroyale.com so you can get on the action yourself. And speaking of that action, we have a lot coming our way this weekend. It's the finals of the Queso Cup Golden Edition, the top 16 vying for that 50K and a golden ticket. So let's bring back on my co-host here, Andrew Guy, and world champion coach Eric Benamu to talk about this a bit. Eric, this is, of course, a stacked lineup as it always is. Mohamed Light, the first qualifier, as he is for pretty much everything, it seems. Is this just Mo's event to lose, or is someone else there going to threaten him for that chance? Yeah, first of all, I'm happy to be back with, with you guys. I missed you. And uh, I think for this, Mo also, apart from the fact that his skill is on another level, he has a huge advantage. You were speaking about it earlier. He already qualified by winning in ESL to that golden ticket part, right? So he knows that he has a backup chance in case this one doesn't work out. That alleviates a lot of the pressure. Obviously, you want to qualify as early as possible. But having that in your back pocket just lets you play more relaxed everyone else is running on full pressure they're not qualified to anything else yet and i mean his experience is on another level you know andrew we have a lot of experienced players here of course you just spoke with one of them in our number two seed wallace of course defending world champion moogie in there the top player or at least tie for top player in america in 77 who do you think is the biggest threat to muhammad like going into this weekend you know, after talking to Wallace, he really feels like the guy that I'm looking at. I love the way he's been playing. I love the deck variation that he's been showing us. And I also really love the confidence that we've seen grow with this young man over the last three years of watching him very closely in the competitive scene. But the thing for me is look at all these great young names that are out there. Titan, Arden Toas, Ian, Asaf, these guys are all looking to make a name for themselves in the professional scene. We all know who they are. We've seen them on ladder. We've seen them in tournaments. But now a golden ticket ticket at the Queso Cup. What a great way to start to build and build that legacy. Certainly a great way to build that legacy indeed. We've seen names built at big CRL events over and over again. Uh, of course, one of those names that stands out to me from last year, Eric, is Ta, who won a Golden Ticket event and at the time was maybe a little, um, let's say, maligned. Maybe people didn't believe in the level that he had, but he made it to the CRL World Finals in the end, made it to the last chance qualifier. And then, of course, he's here again in the qualifying spot. Ta, overrated, underrated? What are his chances like this weekend? I think definitely underrated. I still think he's fighting for, you know, that that real respect out of everyone just because it's been so up and down, up and down. But the fact that he's back here again it shows a lot and it shows how resilient he is to keep on going. Like Andrew said earlier, the rookies from last year are proving themselves over and over again. And to be honest, when I looked at the list of players, Yes, I love Mo in this and I love Wallace in this, especially Wallace since I picked him every single time last year. And like at, at one point I'm going to hit, you know, he's going to win. But Arden Toss, Faust, Ian really proved that last year was no fluke at all. And Ta back again. I mean, these guys are just killing it in their second year. Uh, they absolutely are. And it seems that, you know, talking about the, the second year for these guys, we've seen sort of a big meta shift. They played in the pre-champions era. Now we're in the champions era. We have a fourth champion. The Mighty, Mighty Miner now has been rebalanced and now looks especially dangerous. Uh, Andrew, in this last couple of qualifiers, we've seen a lot of creativity. Some people stay in pretty central meta, but with new balance changes, with the Mighty Miner in the mix, it's kind of gotten pretty wild. Is there anything that you're you're hoping to see deck-wise? Uh, maybe not out of the, the top guys who might go more central meta but out of some of these guys with maybe nothing to lose 
Well, you know, one of the interesting things I saw from the qualifying stages of the Queso Cup was there was a lot of really weird decks out there that actually played pretty well. So I think the idea of, you know, the fact that Royal Giant is really strong in the meta right now, Graveyard's coming back even stronger in the meta, Mortar is everywhere. These types of things you have to expect. You have to expect your opponent to run one of these or two of these centralized decks out of their three. But can you keep them guessing? That's what it's all about. That's why we've always been, you know, saluting Julesy and what Mohammed Light and him have done. It's always about innovating decks, bringing new stuff to the competition, and what a better place to do it than when you got all this money on the line and a golden ticket up for grabs. I know what's really popular in the meta. I want to see what can counter that and make your opponent's analysts go, what just happened? Well, of course, there's only one way to find out about that, and that's, of course, tuning in this weekend for the Queso Cup Golden Edition Finals. Uh, Eric, I know that you're excited for it. Andrew, you're excited for it. I'm excited for it as well. Eric, any final thoughts before we wrap up our conversation today? I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, finish off where I, or last year did, and Wallace is going to win. He's going to, you know, cruise on <laughs> and through 2-0, everybody. Wallace, you're my pick. Uh, the interview was great as well, and I love to see the confidence out of all of these players, but I will say... Watch out for the NA side in this bracket. They don't have that golden ticket. So like I said earlier, well, they will have it, but they don't have it yet in the ESL. Like I said earlier, Moe doesn't have any pressure, so it allows them to play relaxed. This time around, I think it also plays in favor of, you know, I really want this because I don't want to have to wait longer on the NA side of things. Well, of course, we'll see them. Thanks a lot, Eric, for joining us for this conversation. You can follow him uh, at EB7 on just about everything. Andrew, that's going to be it for our show today. It's It's been a wild one. Great interview with Wallace. And, uh, man, I am I am so pumped for this weekend and for all these Golden Ticket events. Yeah, of course. I mean, the Golden Ticket placement for World Finals has been such an exciting thing to watch. All these community-run tournaments, a lot of great names coming up in the space, you know, in-game tournaments, global tournaments, all these different ways to qualify. It's been an exciting 2022. So what's the best way for you guys to stay engaged? Go follow Esports Royale EN on Twitter. If you're here on YouTube watching, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. I've been seeing a lot of conversation out on the Twitter space still about people asking what's going on? How do I get my next golden ticket? What's the next event? Well, the best place to find out is right here on 3 Count. We're three crowns, excuse me. We're back twice a month, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure those notifications are turned on. And I guess you could give me and Rich a follow as well on Twitter. Why not? Yeah, yeah, might as well not. And of course, we're back for the Golden Ticket event this weekend and more. So as Andrew said, make sure you come back. Don't miss a moment for Andrew Guy, Eric Benamou, Joshua AC Sharon, and everyone here at Clash Royale Esports. I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you next time.